Happy Easter, guys. Thank you so much for spending your time with me on the Easter weekend. Uh, let's talk about Iceland again, and we need to talk about Askia again. Many of you might have seen my video about Askia. If not, I'll put it in the end screen. It's really worth watching because it gives you an overview about what Askia is. So Askia is a caldera, a large caldera that spans a lot of square kilometers, and it has the deepest lake that there is. It's 217 meters deep. So this is a caldera that that has formed after a volcanic eruption when that crater basically collapses because there was a magma chamber underneath and then that magma is gone and it collapses and it forms that caldera and that has formed a lake there which is usually frozen in the winter but Askia has shown signs that it is ready to erupt and the scientists are, have been thinking already since fall last year that it's ready to erupt and that's why it's so important to look at it and see that on March 25th it had an earthquake, it had a 3.5 magnitude earthquakes and it was accompanied by a smaller earthquake swarm. So most of the tremors did start on the 25th in the morning and uh, we can also say that the land there at Askia is rising. So we know this from the current eruption that we have in the Grindavik area in the Sutnuka crater series. Check out my videos and my playlist. I have an Iceland playlist. Check this out. There's so many videos with information about that. There we have a magma chamber underneath the Blue Lagoon and the Swartzengi power plant basically. And that magma chamber is filling up with magma from a deeper reservoir below from coming from the earth and from there, if the pressure is too high, it creates magma intrusions or eruptions. And we have an eruption going on there right now. It's been going on for almost two weeks. And there, the land is still rising slowly while the magma chamber is being refilled and it's flowing right out there, feeding that eruption. But you know, if there is a magma chamber like we have here in this Askia area, it's filling up until it's reaching the point of maximum elasticity. And the problem is here that with Askia, if that thing erupts, it will be a different eruption than what we've seen in the Grindavik area. There we see like fissures opening and then the lavas coming out. But Askia will be explosive. It'll be highly explosive because there's a lid on it right now. There's a lake, there's ice, there's snow depending on the time of the year when it will erupt but there is a lid on it and that's why it's going to be explosive so what will be the consequences of this because if you look at the map you might think yeah you know this is not a critical area it's not close to major developments cities or towns so we we'll probably won't have the problem that we have in Grindavik, that Grindavik is threatened by lava flow and by the earthquakes, like fissures opening, cracks and sinkholes. But, but guys, you're forgetting one thing, and that is we're approaching tourist season, and this is quite the tourist attraction. And what is the problem? Because usually we have learned from the Reykjanes Peninsula, from these past eruptions and intrusions, usually before an eruption, we will see an earthquake swarm, like a cluster swarm, and then there might be a little bit of a warning. But we have to say the eruption that's ongoing in Dindavik right now had no warning, little to no warning, because the magma tunnels were already there. The magma could sneak into the eruption area without having to grind. And with this thing here, there could be not much warning or even if there is a few hours of warning there's another problem and because it's basically in the middle of nowhere there is a problem and we'll talk about this in a second but before we do this i want to ask you something guys give me a little easter present and give this video a like and watch it till the end that helps the algorithm to push this video out to a little bit more people and that of course helps support my channel so thank you very much for that guys for leaving that like and now let's continue the tourists and askia 
In August last year, a volcanologist and geochemist at the University of Iceland's Institute of Geosciences, Arman Höskoldsson. We've heard about him. If you follow my channel, we've heard a lot from him regarding the current problems in the Grindavik and Blue Lagoon area. So he has already said last summer that there are all the signs that Askia is on its way to something big, not minor, big. So he says all the measurements that they have indicated this. And he said at the time that it's most likely that Askia will erupt this year if the land rise is not slowing down. He says the volcanic system is preparing and has reached a stage of development so that he thinks it's very likely. So there is a widespread unrest in the system and also in the neighboring areas. And we know Bardabunga has had like three point something earthquakes just recently. Katla, Tofajökul, Hofsjökul and Öskja and in other areas. So if Askja erupts, Arman Hoskolson says if this one erupts, it's probably the worst case scenario compared to the other ones. And why that? Because if he says if Askia erupts, the opportunities for escape are not good. Escape? Why escape? Let's look into this, guys. And I wasn't aware of this. So he says... If this erupts during tourist season, that is really, really bad. And because it is a long way to get away from this, to even get to the parking lot, the parking lot there is basically also on top of a volcano. And to get to where the tourists are going to see the lake and the crater there, you have to walk for almost an hour to reach the parking lot. So it's not that you, oh, warning, get into your car and drive out as fast as you can. And the problem is that this one is going to be explosive. So there is no running away from it. And what else is he saying? He is saying, if the warning at Askia is two to three hours, which is realistic, there is a chance that there are hundreds of people in the area who cannot escape. And that is really, I, I was investigating this and I'm like, whoo, you know, guys, I'm always kind of criticizing the Blue Lagoon for waiting it out to the last minute so that while the people are sleeping there, because this these eruptions, they keep coming at night always for some reason. So people are sleeping in the hotels at the Blue Lagoon and then the sirens go off and they look out of their windows and the sky is red and the eruption is in full force and then they're running out of the hotel. They can feel the heat in the air from the eruption. I mean, I always criticize and say, do you have to wait till the last minute? If you know that something's coming the scientists knew ahead of time something is coming the magma chamber has filled up to the point of maximum elasticity but here you know it takes an hour to walk to the parking lot if you're normal if you're healthy there might be elderly there might be small children who knows right also the problem is how can you reach people there and tell them that they need to evacuate because there is no telephone connection. It seems there is no connection. So he says it could also be difficult to send an emergency mes message to those in the area. If they don't have reception, how can you get the emergency message? So I think, I really, really think maybe they should upgrade this and also have emergency sirens there, something, right? measuring stations that immediately trigger the sirens if there is something going on. And as the scientists said that most likely if there is an eruption, Askia is going to explode, then you have a pyroclastic fall and burst and, and a flood sort of thing. And that can reach, can fly away 10 to 20 kilometers from the source. So 10 to 20 kilometers, guys. And he says, you won't run away from it. He keeps saying that. And also these particles, this, this 
explosive magma explosion, it's not only spreading in a radius of 10 to 20 kilometers, it's also super fast. And that's why I guess he also says you can't run away from it. It goes at speed of up to 100 kilometers per hour. So imagine this and then he says but hopefully there will be a fair warning so that these areas will be emptied when the time comes but you know it doesn't sound great i have to say so i would love to hear more about what they're doing if tourists go there in buses and if they walk to that site i mean what are the precaution measurements and how secure are their warning systems because like I said if you are with me and have been following my channel the last few months we have looked at what's going on in the Sutnuka crater series and uh, it was sometimes less than 30 minutes warning uh, or no warning but it wasn't hours it was days ahead before that they knew okay something could happen but the tourist attraction did not close the Blue Lagoon. So I hope that they'll be able to have a better idea of what's going on in that magma chamber here. But the problem is they're only learning about the magma chamber in Swartzengi because it already had like quite a few eruptions or intrusions. So they kind of know what's the critical point when it erupts. Is that the case here? I'm not so sure. And what is critical at the moment is that the speed of the land rise here at Askia has increased again. And this is shown by measurements that they have conducted since the end of last year. But the land rise is still slower than it has been in the fall of last year. So it is a little bit of a waiting game. What's going to happen? It, this earthquake that was there on the 25th that 3.5 magnitude earthquake was quite large so the icelandic meteorological office has made an announcement and they have said that they will watch it over the coming weeks and that the measurements of this land deformation in the area and the in the coming days and weeks will reveal whether the speed is increasing again or not it looks like it is um, and they are saying that the development of these measurements in this area will continue to be closely monitored because now pretty fast they are approaching the tourist season and they have a satellite image from March 19th and it shows traditional winter conditions. You see the crater there um, and the measurement of the deformation in this area. It shows that the lake is still frozen except for two areas that are always open because of geothermal activity. Yeah, makes sense if there is a magma chamber underneath if this is a volcano. About a year ago in February, it became ice free, which was very unusual so early in the season. So Armand Huskelson said um that there are clear signs that something is brewing. That's what he said just recently, just a few days ago. And he says, of course, we've been waiting for it for quite a while. And, it, and, and he says it has been straining since 2012 because then it melted the ice in the middle of the winter because something must have heated up underneath. And he says that is not really possible unless you add heat to the water. Here is a graph that shows the land rise and if you look at um, the top picture of the graph that shows the northward movement of the land rise, the middle graph shows the eastern movement and the bottom graph shows a vertical movement of the land rising or subsiding but it is rising as you can see. Another scientist that works for the Icelandic Meteorological Office, Benedict Gunnar of Feigson, he's the head of the deformation measurements there. He ha he's also saying uh, there are clear signs of a land rise, that is that the land rise is still there and that suggests that the earthquakes that we've just seen recently 
are related to this land rise. So he says possibly this will end with an eruption as magma is probably accumulating there, but there is nothing yet to indicate that there is a big event going on there. So he says a little bit something different than the other guy, but you know, they don't know much. They know very little. They can just estimate. There is no technology that can really tell you exactly that magma chamber has this and this a size and it's that and this and that. You can only look at the aerial pictures, at satellite pictures, at measuring stations, GPS data and stuff like this. But, you know, it's, it's still that science needs to improve a lot to be more precise with predictions. Askia has erupted the last time in 1961 and um, there was definitely a lava eruption and a number of smaller eruptions also occurred in the 1930s but the last explosive eruption occurred in 1875 and that has caused great destruction in the vicinity of that volcano. Why is Arman Höskoldson saying that it's probably going to be explosive? He says that the lead up to the next volcanic eruption in Askia has been long. It's been quite a while. It's been years. And that there are clear signs that something is brewing there that will eventually end up in an eruption. So the last explosive eruption is quite a while ago. So that's why he thinks they're due for the next one. So the land rise air, it has been rising faster, it has been slowing down, it has been rising faster. And, you know, slowing down does not necessarily mean, oh, this thing is just dying down, everything is good, there will be no eruption. You have to consider, if you have a rubber band, and you let's say this is the magma chamber, and it's filling up with magma, and it stretches, and it stretches, and it stretches. You can stretch it with quite a stable um, speed. But if it reaches the point of maximum elasticity, you have to pull harder. So it slows down. It slows down. And if I pull any further, it will break. But it slows down before it breaks. So it slows down before it erupts too. That's something we have seen in the Sudnuka Crater series. So it doesn't mean everything's good and fine. It could mean the opposite. So... I'll be watching this closely for you guys. Thank you so much for watching here. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your supers here on YouTube and the support you give me on my Buy Me A Coffee website for my farm and for the animals. I'm so grateful for that. Have a blessed Easter. Have a beautiful time with your loved ones, with your family, with your animals. Um, and I'm thinking of you guys and I hope to see you soon again. I will still release videos every day during the weekend and uh yeah i'm out of here now um making some more coffee <laughs> and then uh play with the doggies for a little bit and uh i see you soon guys thank you bye bye